So, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, Max Egan is joining us on the line. Max, welcome. Hey, Chris. Hi, Sheree. Hey, how's hey, it Max, going? Max, thank you very much for being so patient. But um, we were discussing with Clint Richardson the banking system and the entire fraud that's been perpetrated on the people. I know here prices of everything are just skyrocketing. And ultimately, the dollar, any kind of currency is all just an illusion but it's hard to convince the people at the grocery store and the landlord that that's actually the case. They still demand their money at the end of the month or whenever, you know. So any, any – excuse me, any thoughts on that? Well, I mean it is an illusionary system, but um, I mean it's designed to implode the way, it's, the way it's going. I mean people obviously need something to pass around to each other to perform commerce, which is really all money should be. But people need to ask themselves why everything goes up so much, why it gets harder and harder and harder to ever have enough money to survive. And yeah, that, that's the question they need to be asking themselves, and that's because of the nature of the monetary system. So that's what we need to, to look at, because that's, that's the system that keeps everybody on the treadmill, keeps everybody running, keeps everybody distracted, keeps everybody enslaved to a system of perpetual debt, whereby you've got to pay to be alive, and the debt just increases, and the more debt you get, the more it increases because the money that you need to pay off the debt is interest-bearing. I mean, it's just this vicious circle. But, um, I mean, ultimately where money comes from is the big um, big question as well, because people think banks create money from thin air, but really they don't. What All they do is they issue paper for you to use. It's actually the people that create the money. We create the money ourselves when we go into the bank and take out a loan. They just type that into our account, then they give us their paper to use. But we actually created it. It didn't exist on their books until we went in and signed our name. And then that signature is what created the money. So that's another myth involved with the monetary system. The banks create money out of thin air. They don't. They print enough paper for, to cover the money that we, the people, create. And they make us use well, their paper. And that's where the debt comes from. 7% of our economy is paper money. And that's, uh, I would say, that's a very liberal figure a very um i don't even think it's seven percent but most of it is just computer digits now yeah yeah well that's the i mean it doesn't none of it exists it's not real it's just a a, a medium we use for trade and that, that's all it's about and see they've even eliminated the paper through the internet and through this digital society they don't even have to print the paper anymore they can just enslave you to numbers on a screen that you create yourself you create yourself when you take out a loan. They don't create the money from thin air. They create the digits that we now use or the paper that we used to use. Well, it's, Sweden the, is it's the people that create the money. That's, some, that's a, a big myth. That's something that the people really need to get their heads around. The fact that the banks don't actually create anything. They just monopolize the use of the currency, but they don't actually create the money. The people create the money themselves. Right. That's exactly what Clint said. Um, Sweden has gone completely digital. They're boasting that there's very little cash transactions anymore. Yeah, well, this is where it's all heading. They don't want cash transactions because cash transactions free the people. You can't track what people do when it's a cash transaction. And if you want to sell me a, you know, a second-hand car or whatever and it's a cash transaction, the government can't tax that and they can't tax the sale. They can't track what you're doing with your money and track everything you buy and everything you eat and make sure you're doing what they call the right thing. You know, it's all about control and it's all about tracking people's movements. That's what digital money is all about. Right. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Where do you see our economy heading? Uh, the world economy, the every nation. I mean, do you see this global system being implemented anytime soon? Because we've been talking about this for 15 years now, as far as I can remember. Not me, not us, of course, but I mean, we as in the truth movement, for lack of a better term, or the aware. But it doesn't seem like they've brought in the Amero or anything that they've planned besides the euro. And now it looks like they're even crashing the euro. Well, the, Euros, the euro was designed to milk all the wealth of all of the countries in Europe and, and get them all in debt to the, to the IMF. That's basically what that was designed to do. So they do this with every currency. And, and it takes a while. I mean, it's a big world. It takes a long time to get the whole entire globe enslaved to the IMF and in debt to the IMF. It takes and a long time fat in the hog well absolutely it's a long slow process you know i see a lot of people that are saying oh it's going to happen this year it's going to happen next year it's just crying wolf you know we don't know when it's going to happen i mean they'll prop it up with wars as much as they can because see the thing is like i said people don't realize where the money comes from the money comes from the people 
and money will continue to be created as long as people take out loans. So if the government's taking out lots of loans for war, it's creating lots of money. You know what I'm saying? If people take out lots of loans to buy houses and then loans to pay off the bills to their houses and loans to buy cars and all this stuff, that's them creating the money. So the money will continue to be created as long as people are creating money. You see what I mean? The, the problem is, is, is the actual type of economy we've got in place. It's a, an economy based on interest-bearing debt, the whole thing. You know, we take out loans and there's always interest on the loan, so we've got to create more money to pay off the interest on the money we created. And the banks sort of trick us and they, they swindle everybody into laundering all the money that we, the people, create back into their possession. And by this, they take control of, of what is real in the world, the real estate. Because the money is, is just a fictional estate, but the real estate, the resources, the property, the earth itself, that's what we're doing. We, the people who own the earth, we, it is our earth, the mankind's earth, we are transferring all that is real on this earth into the hands of those who control the numbers and issue the paper because they've tricked us into signing all of the money that we create over to them. And then they, they enslave us. But it's, it's an incredible system of slavery because we create the money, so we shouldn't have any debt to anybody because we create this money ourselves. And yet they trick us into believing that they created it and they charge us interest on the money that we created. You see what I'm saying? It's a complete scam. And the interest never exists. So we have to create that ourselves to pay back everything to the bank. And eventually we can't because it doesn't exist. And so all the real estate gets transferred into the hands of these people. That's why the banking cartels and the Vatican and this whole system is gradually taking possession of the whole world through debt. And this debt's all fictional. It's all created simply because we don't understand how the money system works. That's basically what's going on. I mean, so you can't really say when they're going to crash the economy. It'll, it'll keep going and that, until they can con enough people into believing that it's all the way they tell us it is and the only way we can solve it is to create a global currency. And, but if people can work out how it actually works and that they create the money themselves, then it'll, it'll never happen, you know. So they can keep people crying wolf as much as they like. And it just, it's just obfuscation. It just prevents people from looking at the actual situation and seeing what the remedy is, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I know it's complicated, eh? No, no, no. I understand completely. It's, it's. I'm thinking, what a world we've created for ourselves. Well, it's incredible. I mean, the whole money system is the most misunderstood thing in the in the entire planet. It's the system that's used to enslave everybody. Everybody focuses their whole lives around money, but none of them know how it works. And you got uh, people like Mike Montagna have been screaming out about mathematically perfected economy for ten years, twenty years. Telling everybody, hey, here it is, guys. This is how it works. If we had an economy like this, there wouldn't be any debt. There wouldn't be any inflation. There wouldn't be any problem at all. And you know, it's just because the whole money system is the most misunderstood thing on the planet. And he's actually offered that mathematically perfected economy to every president since, like, Reagan or something. You know? And they've all said, oh, this is very interesting. We're not going to do this. You know? But it's, it's, that, that's what we need, something like that. See, the money system is just used to create scarcity as it is. And that's the mechanism that, that is used to keep people on the treadmill, keep them enslaved to debt, keep them enslaved to this system, and eventually transfer all the wealth of the people over to the hands of those who issue the currency or control the digits. And it gets educated out. The further we get down, each generation knows less and less about the money system. And you know, it takes a little while, but eventually people just, just don't know. They just assume that they have to pay to be alive and that they've got to work very, very hard to get the money to do that. And people are just going to be working harder and harder. Debt's going to go further and further through the roof, and people are still going to continue to think it's real because that's what they're educated to do. No, you're absolutely right. I'm working twice as hard now for about half the money, but I'm doing it because that's what I need to do to survive. And so you're absolutely right on that. Let me get your take on this. J.P. Morgan closes Vatican bank account. What do you think that's about? Oh, mate, look, I, I wouldn't really know. I wasn't aware that J.P. Morgan actually had any dealings with the Vatican bank account. I thought that was all run by, by Rothschild interest, the bank, the Vatican. They're all interconnected. They are all working together. Yeah, I wouldn't really know what that's about, mate. It's some sort of theater because ultimately the whole banking system goes back to the Vatican. Right. And the, whole, the whole usurious interest-based money system goes back to the Roman system. Well, it goes back to the Templars, doesn't it? Weren't they the first banking system? Yeah, pretty well. Yeah, pretty well. I mean, but it goes back further than the Templars. I mean, 
this is what what Jesus was on about in the in the temple when he overturned the tables of the money changers. It was this uh-huh. whole system, you know? Right way back then, they're saying, "Hey, get rid of the bankers, guys! You know, get rid of the bankers." Everybody said it all through history. Get rid of the bankers. Was it Thomas Jefferson or, or Abe Lincoln or one of your presidents said that um, bankers were more dangerous to the country than, um, than than armies from foreign shores? I quote something something to that uh, that degree. Give me a control of a country's money supply, and I care not who makes the laws. Well, yeah, well, Mayor Amschel Rothschild said that, of course. Yes, yeah. But there was one of your presidents that says that banking, banking system, fractional banking, central banking, is more dangerous to your country than, than an army coming from foreign shores. And it's absolutely true. And this is the system that is being used to enslave the entire world. Now, we go in there and we, we see a poor third world country. Oh, look at these guys. They're living at one with nature. They're living in grass huts and enjoying their lives. We can't have that. They need to be civilized. They need to have concrete roads. They need to be in debt to the World Bank so that they can have a, a DVD player and a stereo and wear the latest uh, shoes and we can put a McDonald's in there. And then they're civilized. Then they're, then they're back with us and we get them in debt. And because they're in debt to this interest-based system and they can't pay, well, we strip all the resources from the country and we leave the people to rot. And it's like this cancer that eats up around the world. And people will say, humankind is a cancer on the earth. It isn't humankind. It's the financial system. It's the money system that is the cancer on the earth because it is the interest-based nature of the money system that causes humankind to rape the planet that we live on because we believe we have to pay to be alive. And we'll never, ever have enough money to pay off the debt, no matter how many resources we take from this planet, because the system itself is designed to create more and more debt. So we can never get out of it. You know, the, the, the politicians will, will strip mine the planet till it looks like the moon, <clears throat> and then they'll think we've got to find another planet somewhere in the universe to exploit because we still need to pay off our bill to the bank. You know, that's, that's just the way their, their brains work, and you can't even blame half of them for it. They're just misguided. They think the economy is real. Well, you mentioned earlier theater, and speaking about uh, strip mining, Coney 2012, what are your thoughts we talked about this last time I was on the show, actually. I mean, great distraction while Obama bought in Bill HR 347, you might notice. Yes, but... Um, and it's, you... also, it's also opened the... You know, it's paved the way for invading any country they like in, in Africa, as long as it's for humanitarian reasons. That means that if anybody's getting killed by anybody over there... Yeah, we can send in the army, we can go in and we can help the people. If civilians are in danger, we're going to go in and help them which means we're going to put armed forces anywhere in, in Africa that we see a conflict. And it gives, gives them access to all the resources, what there is left in Africa. I mean, Africa's already been raped so much. The people of Africa have been so downtrodden. And oh, it's you know, incredibly, uh, incredibly sad what's happened to Africa. Are you aware that they have had some significant events going on in Uganda lately? The, the leader, Museveni, is a brutal dictator, and uh, they have... They even have a bill called the Kill the Gays Bill. Oh, that lovely. basically is just going to go around and, and find gay people and kill them or okay. put them in prison for the rest of their lives. Yeah, that, that's really going to help the world situation. That's, that's yeah. Well, yeah. if you look into Rick Santorum and all these other religious types in the Republican Party, they are all like really connected to this whole Coney 2012 and and this even it goes as far as even the the guy that had this breakdown recently was uh giving speeches at the same place that Bachman and Perry and all these other people are giving speeches and it, it's just uh, amazing how much infiltration there is and how we're already over there we're already strip mining. We we didn't even wait for the military. We got over there and we we've already messed it up in a big way. We've really really messed up their society. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you look way back what happened to Ethiopia in its dealings with America, which is what created the wasteland that that we saw for so many years with all the starving children, all those ads to help the the children in Ethiopia back 20 or 30 years ago. This is all created by uh uh, Western corporations that went in there and exploited the country. So yeah, we've already done an incredible a lot of damage to the country. But what they're doing now is they're legitimising it. They're saying it's okay to go in there as long as you're helping the children. 
You know, it's a it's a complete scam, and there's been all this stuff happen, like Bill HR three forty seven, and there was the uh, the other bill, the um, the Protection Act that, that Obama put through as well, that basically gave them the right to commandeer all crops and all food and basically everybody's skills. You know, well, tell us how how you feel about that. We would really like to hear more about that. 